Hello and welcome to Tutorial CU. My name is Yannick and in this video we will make a brief comparison between interfaces and abstract classes in C-Sharp. But first of all, both of these concepts allow developers to define common behaviors and characteristics across different classes, improving code reusability and reducing duplication, right? So here I already created an interface, it's called iPayable, right? Check out our video on naming conventions if you want to know why we have to write an i here. So public interface iPayable. And inside of an interface we can define the structure. So what the class that implements this interface needs to create. In this scenario right here, if a class implements this interface, we need to have two methods. One called calculate pay, and it needs to return a decimal, and one method that's named get paste up and it returns a string. Now let's create an abstract class. Here we have an abstract class called employee and it's implementing the iPayable. So for my side of view and my experience, the real question is not only will I use an abstract class or will I use an interface? In a lot of scenarios, you want to use both at the same time. So what is an abstract class? Well. An interface is definitely something where you cannot create a class from. I can create a class and implement that interface. For the abstract class, I cannot directly create an instance of that abstract class. I cannot create an employee, right? So this is what abstract means because it's not entirely done. It's just kind of a blueprint. So if I want to create something from that abstract class, I have to create another employee, let's say like an hourly employee or whatever, and that one can get then created. So here we have that abstract class and that I payable. Now we have two properties here. So one of the benefits of that abstract class is that we can really specify properties and we can even assign values right to them. So as you can see right here, we can assign a default value. Now, this is the abstract class, and here you can see the implementations of the iPayable. We have the public virtual string get paste up. You don't have to make it virtual, but you can. And we have that public abstract decimal calculate pay. So by using the abstract class, we are able to also for this virtual string get paste up, we can provide some default implementation. We cannot do that in an interface. In an interface, we can only create the well, rough structure, right? But inside of an abstract class, we can for sure provide a default implementation as we can just provide a default name, for example. So the thing is that we don't have to do it. So here we have an abstract decimal calculate pay and we don't have an implementation. So we are providing the calculate pay method, but we are not, well, creating the implementation right here. We have to do it if we inherit from the employee, but we don't have to do it right here. So it basically means that when I just create another class, which is inherited from the employee, let's say it's an hourly employee inherited from our abstract class, we again have additional fields, so properties, hourly rate and hours worked. And here you can see that we have our calculate pay implementation, right? So here we cannot like leave it blank. It's not optional. You can see we are getting an error which says hourly employee does not implement the inherited abstract member employee calculate pay. So we have to implement it now. Awesome. So this is a good example on understanding that interfaces and abstract classes have some similarities, also some differences, but most importantly, that they offer you an amazing way to keep well-structured and optimized code by using both of them together. The interface creates the structure, the abstract class can create the implementation, but doesn't have to. However, however, it can implement an interface, but very importantly, you cannot create any instance from an abstract class. You have to use that abstract class in another class, so inherit from it, in order to be able to create instances from it. Great. So if you're watching such a video on such advanced topics, chances are that you're interested in boosting your C-Shop skills. So this is why I want to tell you that we offer a self-paced online course, it's called the C-Shop Progress Academy, that teaches you ASP.NET Core and advanced C-Shop in depth, even unit testing and Angular is provided. And we offer a 14 day money back guarantee. I'm absolutely sure that this is the fastest way on how you can progress as a C-Shop developer. 
So please go ahead, check it out. You can find the link in the description below, or popping up right now at the top right corner. Now that said, go ahead and subscribe to our channel because you don't want to miss any of our upcoming C Sharp and .NET related videos. So thanks for watching and I hope I see you back in the next video. So have a good one.